Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Sweden, McMurra, Wintersol, Wintersol means the winter sun, Swedish single malt whiskey. Very, very good. And up here it says very, very prominently, aromic profile X port wine cask Quinto da do Valado. That is a winery um, in Portugal from 1716. That's a long time ago, to be very, very honest. All right, let's put the bottle over here. Let's put the packaging over here. I'm not really sure if I like that color fading here. It almost looks like the German flag at the very first time I saw it, but that's all right. Um, Angela de Orazio, probably mispronounced her name, so sorry, Angela. Uh, she is the mastermind behind McMurrah. She's done a lot and she has great connections to a lot of the different vi uh, um, vineyards in Europe, Italy, Portugal, France, and so on. And this time she also um, pulled some strings and got some great export casks. They were first fill 500 to 700 liter export casks. If you go to mcmurra.se for Sweden, it might have been .com as well. You can go to um, Vintersol and you can actually go to the data sheet and you find out all this information. Also, there were used new and first fill American oaks that were um, casks that were between 128 and 200 liters. So that's interesting. So um, also first filled um, ex bourbon casks, which were 100 liters. Um, always divide by four, so or 3.8. So you're talking now here about little quarter casks. And also, and this is the interesting thing that um, contradicts a lot of things I read online. They had first fill or the Lozo sherry casks that were actually in Swedish oak. They were between 100 and 120 liters. So the transparency here, once again, is not great. So I've read at many different places that 50% of the spirit was actually for 16 months in, and that's a problem in port casks from Swedish oak. I think someone got something mixed up. So yes, it was for 16 months in those big court, um, ex port casks, and there was also Swedish oak. Now the only thing is, in all the information I've read, there's no mention whatsoever of sherry. And yet, on the data, data sheet, they said they had first fill Orolozo sherry casks from Swedish oak. All right, so who knows? What I don't particularly like about McMurra is the fact that they store their whiskeys down in a old mine. It's a mountain mine called the Bodas. B-O-D-A with two little omelets, two little dots and an S. Because I think whiskey should breathe. I think whiskey needs time in the cast to go in and out of the wood due to temperature changes. And in down in a mountain mine, constant temperatures. Now that's great for you as a producer, less angel share, but not the best thing for making a whiskey mature. Personal, additive, subtractive, maturation. This is whiskey base number 138993, 46.1%, non-chilled filtered, no color added. Over here in Europe, it's about 56, 57 euros. Um, in England, it's about 55, 54 pounds. Probably in the States, if it ever makes it there, it's going to be $80 plus. This is also called, also called a Zengzong whiskey, um, season whiskey. There's a winter whiskey from McMurra. There's a summer whiskey, winter, fall, and also spring whiskey. Um, very, very nicely done. So let's first of all nose it. Now the nose is not a sweetness that I would expect from a port. There's a little bit of lactose acid in there. Um, it's a little bit more of a sour type of moment at the beginning, more of a green apple that's not ripe. And then you have on top of it some of the um, berries, um, going for the, uh, the raspberries, going for the little bit of blackberries. It says here, um, the aromatic profile of the whiskey comes from finishing a cast that previously held port wine with notes of vanilla, chocolate, and pepper. Be careful. Anyone that writes pepper actually means alcohol. It's a very strong alcohol. Um, the resulting whiskey is elegant with a light spiciness and notes of warm raisins, raisins or lozo, um, sun ripe fruits, that would be the port, tropical berries, port, buttery pear fudge. I've never had pear fudge, have you? I've never had buttery pear fudge. That's an interesting thought. Vanilla and toasted oak. All right, so 
46.1%. Now, to be very, very honest, I'm not a fanboy of McMira's profile, taste profile. I'm a fan of their distillery. I love the fact they started out at the beginning, um, then they built the second distillery, a gravity distillery. I love that they actually uh, produced and manufactured um, great bottle design, by the way, great labeling, all the information in the back. You have nice little things, a little indentations here for your fingers to pour. Um, great design with the corks. If you look here, you see that nice little McMurray moment. You have here the same thing. Um, very, very, very well done. And uh, they're doing everything right except for hitting my wheelhouse and their taste. I have enough friends, enough people who love their whiskey, but it's just not so far, except for one of the um, with the one of the spring editions way way back when, as well as one of the rums, as one as one of the Cavados. I've had of the maybe eighty different editions out there. I've had three that I went nice. Um, that's just my personal problem, but I do like the company. lactose acid I mentioned but on top of that there's a tiny little bit of vanilla there's some tannins on top of that there's some nice berries on top of that I'm not getting the raisins yet but I am getting a little bit of the vanilla kicking in there if you have first fill American oak you're always gonna get virgin oak a little bit of the vanilla mm-hmm Pepper, yeah. Towards the end, I'm getting a little bit of a... For me, it's more of an artificial type of taste. Um, not what I really like, but imagine you have a repaired a inner tube of your bicycle and that air from the inner tube, a little bit, a little bit of a rubbery type of moment, but then overlying that is the berries, overlying that is a little bit more vanilla, overlying that is a little bit of the oak. The pepperiness of the whiskey is more than evident. Um, the entire, it's not, it, it's not massaging your gums and your tongue, rather it's, it's little needles that go in there, a hot pepperiness for the 41, 46.1%. Uh, I'm going to dilute it down a little bit. Um, not the th three drops to open it up. I'm going to try to bring it down to 40% and try it there. Um, why did I buy this bottle? Um, basically, um, I have a WhatsApp a bottle share group in Germany. And um, one of my members actually, Jason, this is the brand new bottle in the market. Can you buy it? It was like, mm. and then the second person was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, good. Um, I usually just get little samples myself and I try them. And that's more than enough. But this time I went for the bottle. Okay, um, it's more of a silkiness, it's more of a vanilla, it's more of a berry with a little bit more water in there. I'm wanting to like this whiskey, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Water does help it, yet. <laughs> It doesn't really get rid of that alcohol. It really doesn't get rid of that tiny little artificial moment. It does kick in a little bit more of the tannins, the berries, the vanilla. Um, everything's just, it's, 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 it's almost holistic. It's almost um, the way it should be. But the entire time, there's that little bit of that um, acid -y type of um, alcohol punching through. For me, it, maybe it's someone else called it metallic. Um, it's a little bit too young. My personal preference would have been two to three years longer and maybe the export casks, um, more of a port influence. My personal opinion, um, that has to do with, of course, the mine, the temperature differences, the additive and the subtractive uh, maturation of the casks. I could have used a little bit more time, personal opinion. I'm gonna give this a C minus. A, why haven't you? bought it, B, buy it, C, you can buy it, D, don't need to buy it, and F, oh, why was it even made? So this is a C minus. If you want to, if you find it, if you like this, why not? Don't expect too much of the port, though. It's it's nice, it's elegant, um, it's, it's, it's subtle, and it's not overwhelming. Yeah, um, if you ever had Magnus, um, Joseph Magnus, everything in there is overwhelming. I love it. 
This is very, very kind of subdued. All right, a value for money, um, 55, 58 euros over here. If I don't like it really, I can't, I'm not willing to pay that much for a no age statement. So it's gonna be a D plus, sorry. All right, Whiskey Jason here, Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. My question of the day is, what is your favorite port wine finished whiskey and or what is your favorite whiskey from Sweden? They might be the same, who knows? Either write down if you have a favorite whiskey from Sweden or a favorite whiskey that is a port wine finish. Maybe something from Glen Morangi or any place else. Whiskey Jason here. Thank you very much for watching. Videos come out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. All the best. Please like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, please write to Jason. Whiskey Jason, one word, I'm sorry. Whiskey Jason at gmail.com. Bye-bye.